This right here is an on-farm pregnancy test. These right here are the needles that I need to draw blood for this pregnancy test. Let's go see what it says. So I did a video quite a while back about the fastest way to see if your cow is pregnant. Well, that fastest way just got even faster. So what I did before is I drew a blood sample and then I took it to a local co-op and they would do the testing for me there and tell me if my cow is pregnant. Well, this right here is so that I can do it at home. It's gonna be basically the same as what I did before with drawing the blood, but then we'll have to put this on here. You gotta shake the tube and put drops on and some solution stuff. So we're gonna have to go outside and get a blood sample, come back in here where it's a little warmer and try this thing out. It's cold outside. So here's the problem. I got our Guernsey cow Maddie bred a little over a month ago. Now these tests are only good to do at least four weeks after you get them bred. So that should work fine. But here's the thing, three weeks after I got her bred, she showed signs of being in heat again. And this happened the same thing last year. And she had ended up that she was actually pregnant from the first time she got bred. But this time, these signs were like way more obvious. So I'm pretty worried that she didn't actually get pregnant that first time, but here's what we're gonna do. So since these tests are only good like four weeks after they're bred, if we test her now about a month after I got her bred the first time and she tests positive, that means she was pregnant the first time I got her bred. If she tests negative, that means she is not pregnant from that time, but she still could possibly be pregnant from the second time I got her bred. Real quick, the other thing to factor into here is that this little heifer right here has also been going into heat, and so that kind of messes with things. I don't know, I think the best thing to do is just gonna be to take this blood sample and test it and see what we can come up with. Gonna get a little grain for her so she'll hold still for us. Maddie, get out of here. I don't want you over there eating the grain before I'm ready for you. Get out of here, Maddie. Come on. Doing this always makes me really nervous because one of the first times I did it on our Jersey cow, I had a hard time finding the vein and I had to poke her several times to get it and I just felt really bad, but I eventually did get the sample and it worked out, but it always makes me a little nervous because you gotta hit it right to get the blood to come out right and to get enough of it to get that sample. So here's what we're gonna use. I've got a needle holder, a needle, and a vacuum tube. This needle gets threaded into the needle holder and what you're gonna do when you stick the other needle, this has got a needle on this side and a needle on this side. When you've got this other needle stuck into the cow's tail, into the vein, then blood starts coming out, we're gonna push this vacuum tube onto there. There's a little soft spot right here that'll get poked into and it'll suck the blood into this tube and that will get us our sample so we can see if Maddie is pregnant. I'm actually a little warm in here, so I think I'm gonna take my coveralls off to make it a little easier to move and get this done. Maddie, not over there. No, get back. All right, come on, girl. Now it would be handy to have two people for this, but I don't this time. Lift your tail up pretty much as straight as possible. That's how you wanna be able to take the blood out and that will also kind of immobilize her. Now that's nice and clean. We're gonna go about six inches or so above her bunghole, stick that needle in there. This is the scary part. So we're gonna hold it like this, stick it in, and then shove that onto there. We wanna go at a 90 degree angle to the tail, right up the center of the tail. Oh girl. There we go, there's blood. Shove it in there. If it gets shoved in too far, it might stop, so bring it out just a little bit. Come on. That was a failed attempt. That will not be enough blood for the sample. What happened was when I shoved this on, it shoved the needle farther in, and I think past the vein then, and it just messed it up. So I'm gonna have to try again. There we go. All right, that is filling up. So I'm gonna get some more wipes and wipe that off real quick. We've got our sample. That is honestly one of my least favorite things to do with the cow. Good girl, good girl, Maddie. As soon as you get the blood sample, you're supposed to invert it 10 times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Said it's a very important step and I didn't get it done right away, but it's still flowing nicely, so that should work fine. Now we'll see what the next steps are. Here's the test. We're gonna be putting the blood in here and our results will be up here. 
So this thing here is to get the blood out of the tube. And this here is a wash solution that I guess we'll put in after we put the blood in. Mix it another five times. Said that we need to get this straw right here completely full. If any extra comes up, it'll go into this little bulb right here. So we need to squeeze the top of this, see if we can fill this thing up with no air bubbles. Now we are gonna drop this blood into this little thing right here. And it said that if any stays in the top right here, just tap it a little bit to make sure that it all goes down. Now within two minutes of putting the blood in here, we need to take the tip of this thing off and squeeze this wash solution in there. And we need to squeeze six drops into the tester. Now we gotta wait 20 minutes <laughs> to see the results. And I do wanna to mention too that it said that the sample and like the test and stuff should be within 59 to 86 degrees. So that's why I didn't do it outside because it's like 20 something degrees out there. And while we're waiting, I've got another project that I wanna work on outside real quick for the cows. Kadesh has been giving the cows their water every day. But since it's gotten colder, the hose has been freezing at night and he doesn't quite have the expertise to loosen the hose and drain it out or the strength to do to like loosen it when it's tight and when it's frozen. So what I want to do somehow is put like a big pipe along here that the water can just go down in and it stays slanted and that'll drain out and won't freeze shut. So I'm gonna have to go back to my junk pile and see what I can find. It's kind of long to go all the way from there, all the way over to there. So I think what I'm gonna do is move this round bale over there, put the water up here, I can just hang the pipe on there, stick it through that gate right into the trough. Oh no, that's not good. Stick it through this first one there. Timer. Let's go check that test. Super excited. A little scared. So I'm really afraid she's not pregnant because it sure did look like she was in heat. But since it was a little bit like that last year, I thought maybe, just maybe, she was actually pregnant. Let's go see what it says. That doesn't look good. Only one line at the top means she's not pregnant. So. I guess she didn't take that first time. I guess we're gonna get to do it again in a few weeks. See if she got pregnant the second time we got her bread. Really, really hoping. Cause I don't wanna use more of that expensive stuff. Don't wanna have to wait longer for a calf. Just have to wait and see. Can unhook it to take this thing back off. For most of the winter, it'll stay on there. Hooked on there and the pipe goes to the water trough. 